Oh, okay, that's <laughs> that. That was the death of me. That was that was the aim punch. <laughs> It's Hunt Showdown's 4th anniversary this week, and as big fans on team, we don't need a better excuse to jump into Hunt during work hours. So we joined up with Crytek's Dennis Schwartz, lead designer on the game, to see what's been going on those past 4 years. Check it out! How many hours do you have in the game, roughly? Uh, I think it's just about 200. 200, yeah? Yeah, so, you know, getting there. That's good. Yeah, what a coincidence, I have 196. Oh, I think we're probably very close, thanks. I think I'm just a touch under. I started playing it for real, like, July of last mm. year. You've made up time on me, to be fair, though. <laughs> I thought I played quite a lot, you know, but you've, uh, yeah, you've had it, done it about half the time that morning. What about yourself, uh, Dennis? I got, like, 2,000-something. <laughs> but, I mean, it kind of comes with the job, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that was one of the things we were kind of, I, was, I was thinking about, uh, chatting about, you know... You must play, you know, a, a crazy amount of this game. But how important do you think it is to keep jumping in every time there's a new update and keep playing it? I, I think personally, it's the most important thing to do uh, as a developer, especially as a designer on a project. In any project, like you need to understand the game, you understand the product. I mean, uh, for example, like I, I am a person who would never cheat himself anything, even though I would be capable of doing that. Obviously, like I could just amend my profile or something, and <laughs> I, I don't do that for gameplay value. Um, because, like for me. It doesn't make any sense to unlock directly a, a weapon that we release a new update if if I can not just have the same experience as everyone else and actually mm. playing to unlock and getting a feeling for what that means actually. So you need the blood sweat. Yeah, you don't have a million hunt dollars in your. No, your no, no. So the hunt, hunt well, dollars are are completely, completely what I earn myself. So I have actually a hundred thousand at the moment. Oh, okay. Which is a lot. Which is a lot. Um, but I also don't prestige, personally, that's just my subjective thing, I, I never do that in games, and uh, therefore I, I accumulate a bit more money maybe than people who just kind of go for a reset once in a while, just to, to grab the bonuses of that. Uh, yeah, I'm exactly the same, I haven't prestiged oh, yeah, I don't yet. Know if you know, so I think all of us are unprestiged, yeah. level 100s. I, I, guessing how good we are. I just like to have the options, right? Like, I mean, I, I unlock all the gear and stuff, and just I, I, I like taking like sometimes even like meme loadouts or just like gear that is a bit, a bit like not meta, right? If you know what I mean. Yeah. And exactly. and uh, just having to unlock that every time my prestige, just for me personally, just wouldn't be the best thing. It's not the way to go. Yeah. I know a lot of people do it for the XP bonuses, you know, and try and go through and get get those tiers and then just gain everything again and then leave it at that. Right. So how do you normally play? Like, do you play more more tactical, like trying to like spot things out, uh, investigate, or go in like just in and just just kill whatever is coming? For, for me you? personal, uh, personally, or like my group that I play with, um, we try and do it really tactically for about three or four matches, and then we get really fed up, and then we run in just shotguns, trying <laughs> to like you know rinse everyone that way. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, I always need to mix things up. Uh, if I can, I like to like to actually play it a bit slower and more tactical. But just sometimes, I just want to play with a shotgun, and just like go in or. Oh just no! Let's do that. Yeah. Oh, nice. I don't know if everyone has different names for all the different things. Like, I've, I call <laughs> it a bee lady. I always have, and that's just the name of this character to me. But you know. I I, I think I think that's perfect. If I, I've heard a couple of other names, but I think bee lady is actually very respectful. So uh, <laughs> yeah. let's go with that. <laughs> I think typically we we do a lot of sprinting around like this. This is pretty similar when I get at least one compound uh, done, like thrown caution to the wind. But as soon as we start hearing gunshots, we start feeling a lot more yeah. careful about sound. So the one thing we kind of briefly touched on was the skins. Yeah. You know, how is? Oh, that's actually right at the slaughterhouse. I knew this was going to happen. As soon as I get into like a question or something, we immediately <laughs> run into some action. I feel like okay, I need to focus on this now. It'd be terrible. <laughs> It's uh, all good. Uh, it's like on every stream, right? <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I was wondering, like, you know, how how difficult is it to kind of balance the skins themselves? That really is right over there. To actually balance the skins in the game, you know, when you put a new one out, are you thinking like, oh, this one's going to be a real popular one? I think it really depends on 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 the on the flavor. I mean, as you as you've seen, like, we have so many different skins in the game where we go we go for for even initially, like on the first release, like we had we had the red shirt, right, the, with that with the with the, um, the target basically strapped to the front and the back. Uh, which is absolutely more for the memes, but then we oh. also have the more badass looking ones. There's, so, there's uh, people in uh, that courtyard. Okay. Not too much. Okay. I'm fairly close range, I'm just trying to sneak up while you guys yeah. go for it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think what you're saying about the skins, I mean, that is, yeah, that's 100% true. I mean, I don't pick the skin because 
I want I want my character to look cool. I don't really think about the tactics of it, but maybe I'm not playing at such a level where, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna jump in with Kane or something and be really like hidden if I'm yeah, not. Yeah. Kane definitely has been the one that has given us the, oh. the biggest headache. Him. Uh, they are two seventy. Two seventy check on this uh, fence right here. Let, let's maybe envelope him a little right side. <laughs> we don't even call him Kane anymore. We call. We call a certain kind of player a sweaty cane. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, a sweaty cane holding a Mosin uppercut. We're just like, oh, we feel extra good when we can take one. Yeah, we did some initial initial uh, tuning of the skin when we first had the feedback of him, right? And mm -hmm. um, we still have to we have to go back to it as well. It's something that we uh, like acknowledge in the latest latest dev stream as well that we want to do more changes to that. It's it's just like that guy just worked too much in terms of uh, camouflage. Uh, it's ju he's just too well concealed. Like he, you know you know how camouflage works in terms of like that you kind of disrupt the patterns, right? Like the, you kind of dissolve the silhouette, and he's mm -hmm. just very good at doing that just because he's yeah. just dirty and muddy and stuff. He's muddy and the sticks on his back and everything. You know, just, yeah. at, at this point, it's more of a symbol of the type of person we're encountering than like an advantage. So, you know, we, we kill plenty of them. It's not like they can drop on us that much. Oh, they they uh, moved into the compound. They? Yeah. Yeah. So the moment we hear the shooting, we, we start our run as well. Yep, that's our call. <laughs> <laughs> so they're engaging from the from the white building, the, the little little um, like living quarters there. Oh, the right yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. They have not picked up the bounty. We could also commandeer the, the boss yeah, there and take the pipe from oh, there. Sure. That's really yeah, not yeah, a bad yeah. shout at all. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's get right around. I would hope at least one of them is in there. Yeah, yeah at least know, that's cool. so really maybe we can overpower the whoever's left yeah. left there and then, yeah, yeah. And then just play oh, the right ball. Yeah. Come in. Dead. Oh, he's over there. He left. He's outside. He's outside. Pick okay. up. Try to cover. So I know a few of these compounds you kind of tweaked a little bit, you know, just uh, maybe added a window or whatever. How often do you kind of? look at a compound and think, oh, maybe we can make that a little easier to push from that side or a little harder to push from the other side. Right. Okay, I went through this window. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, Go the, ahead. Latest, the latest big push we did was around when we released, uh, released like the Zal, the latest map. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of went back to the old maps as well. So like, what, what levels, what parts of the maps are not longer up to the, up to the same standards, right? What do we figure out balancing-wise? Yeah, four years so is a long time. Easy. It was a long time for a battle royale map to last. Okay, one person got knifed out here, and then I shot the person that won. There's two dead. Oh, yeah, he's behind the fence. Though. It's a risky shot with your head, so... Four years is a long time for a battle royale type map, so I'm curious. Like, other, like, we've seen the changes, but what were the philosophies behind these newer changes? Like, was it... New maps have better sight lines, so let's... Yeah, it's it's, it's basically those. it's basically dominant strategies. I mean, we have to keep them right here. Like, we, we have multiple game modes, right? We have Bounty Hunt, but we also have Quick Play. And, um, like, areas, same area is kind of used differently in these modes a little bit. Like, how you kind of defend the area, if you're the Wellspring carrier in Quick Play, versus um, how do you approach, like, a Bounty team or defend the Bounty. Um, so, so it's been mostly driven about, like, access to the compounds, a variety, and... You know, like for example, if you take Windy Run, it's like one of the eastern compounds on the second map. Um, now we have added like additional roof access because we found it was particularly hard to actually kind of push this particular um, compound. Right? So things like that, like how you can move around, how you can circle around, how you can reposition yourself. All of these things are the driving kind of like questions we ask ourselves when we want to improve these compounds. So while we're right in the action, so what's the kind of data you get to then say, oh, okay, people are struggling to push on this thing, you know? You actually just seeing. Um, the success rates of when it's there. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we kind of see like heat maps and, and we see like what compounds are like. Obviously, the sentiment like in the community is also very important for us. So, like, uh, what are people talking about in social media? Um, what, what, for example, Scapa Lake, take it as an example, right? Like, it's, it's you know, like this love hate relationship with the compound a little bit because of the, the original flooding theme that it had. Um, it was kind of like hard to to to, to kind of move around, push, etc. Everything was a bit more 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 sludgy in terms of like getting getting bogged down. And um, people liked the visual style of it, however, right? So, so it, it, it's they, they kind of appreciated like the whole idea of like this half sunken houses in the water. So we had to come up with a compromise of like how can we make it playable, but also still retain that that style. So that's kind of been driving the decisions around that one. Open it up, give more flexibility. I mean, it is a corner compound, right? It's, that's naturally more hard, like like harder to. Yeah, people aren't going to come uh, from it from multiple angles so much. It's yeah, exactly. Away. 
Okay, yeah, I'll make it out easily. <laughs> Easy money, take it. Easy money. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, close. Too, too little, too late. Lovely. <laughs> well, it's good to start for the win. There we go. Also, Dennis, have you? <laughs> yeah. Have you? As a side note, you know, I, I really am a huge fan of the main bounty hunt game mode. I think it's like one of the most interesting interpretations of, uh, I don't know, the uh, offshoot of Battle Royale that exists. And I'm curious if you guys have noticed that uh, other games are starting to take notice of it. Like, have you played the new Battlefield 2042 mode? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a couple of really exciting games uh, that have either come out or, or about to come out that kind of try to find their own new take on, like, so what does Royale do next, right? I mean, that's kind of like, I guess, the question that that any dev kind of asks themselves, it's like uh, working in, in, in that genre and, and kind of like looking at the market. I mean, there's games out there that, that like, like like Tarkov, ourselves, the cycle, um, Hazard Zone for battles that you mentioned. I mean, these are all interesting, unique takes on on what comes after after Royale in a way, and what what can we add to the formulas that exist? Um, how can we how can we bring something fresh and new and exciting to the players? And, I think that what what makes it so interesting, and yes, I expect there's gonna be like ten more of those. I, I do also expect that. I, I guess I I'm surprised it's taken this long. You know, we're four years into hunt, and I, can, I don't know. My perspective it seems like it's getting more popular slowly, but definitely hasn't like you know blown up the way that the other games have. Where is it? Oh, it's way over. Uh, yeah, on that note, like, you know, I, I have, I got into it because I had a friend that played it from the, you know, from the get-go, I'm just going to um, and, you know, he was like, seriously, you need to play this, you need to play this game, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, it's so good, and I was like, okay, yeah, all right, I'll, I'll try it, I'll try it, and then I tried it, and I was like, oh my god, this is the best game, I need to play this game all the time, and then I, then we started telling friends, we got loads of other people into it, and slowly but surely, we've kind of gained this group of people who all are in that same situation of like, oh, I need to tell everyone, we all need to play this game, you know. <laughs> and it's, it's just been a slow burn and you know with chat about i think it was the four year anniversary then it's coming up you know how, how do you see it then over those four years well i think i think that um for us it's, it's critic i mean it has been kind of of a new ground as well right it's new grounds in terms of we haven't done an early access product before <sighs> um like the just just like seeing seeing a product grow step by step live for me personally, has been the, the, the first time to do that as a developer, right? Mm -hmm. Other people in our team have worked on, on, on Warface or other, other projects uh, from other, other people in the past, other, other jobs they've been to. But uh, for me, it was a new experience. And in my opinion, a very positive one. What I really liked about it was just that um, you kind of see start like the game starting to shape up a little bit around these initial ideas you had. And some of those ideas turned out to be pretty bad. And some of these ideas turned out to be pretty good. And just like uh, iterating and that you keep on growing it. Like we've kind of been growing with this whole thing alongside. So I, I can understand that it also takes time for for, for people, for, for, for the gamer scene as a total, kind of to adapt to these like of new concepts and, and kind of like like accept them a little bit for 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 what they bring and and make sense of them right because we also had to had to make sense of them first not everything that that we wanted to have in the game has been added to the game and some things we will never add to the game like for example at one point we had a crafting system on the roadmap that was an original design we decided against that as we noticed okay people really enjoy kind of this type of like round to round gameplay having their choices and and treating this whole thing more as a match right rather than like a like a survival game for example and I think I think it's these different influences that have kind of like shaped shaped Hunt as it grew. And I mean, yeah, four years, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> just considering that, honestly, um, it's it's just been such an interesting ride to add more and more interesting things to the game and then see how people react. Like if you would have asked me about like um, what would have been 2021 or would have been 2020 or would have been 2019 offering to the game and how would you have expected that to shape? I think it would have been very different from what it actually mm -hmm. turned out to be. What do you see as like the biggest changes, like specific changes made over time? I'd say um, fairness as a topic. Um, so the first half of, of, of early access and and like uh, the initial launch in 2019 after that, um, I think fairness has been one of the biggest concerns. Like like 
for example, the topic of camping alone, or will you go for the boss? Will you just sit outside? Like, who is being rewarded for what? And how do you give people options to counter dominant strategies like uh, just yeah. waiting at the exit for the bounty to be delivered to you, right? Um, I think that that and it's not a single feature. It's like a package of features. It includes like the red, the red, uh, the red clue um, 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 highlighting if mm -hmm. another team is around, or the boss whisper if other people are around. They've all been answers to particular problems that we faced as the game was live and people started playing and like min-maxing it, right? right? And uh, I would say like the governing rule set behind all of that, that for me is like the biggest accomplishment and also the biggest, most single important feature set to have added to game because it keeps people happy. It keeps them satisfied. It gives them a, a sense of being treated fairly and, and having a chance to win, right? Without like camping becoming the thing or just rushing in becoming the thing. All of these are valid options because of this governing rule set that is basically trying to keep everything viable, if that makes sense. Right. I can imagine how frustrating it would be to, to try to like approach a compound and wonder if people are camping, not be able to check if the clue is groaning or if there's... Yeah, that, that seems instrumental, else. doesn't it, to like actually succeeding on pushing those things. Yeah, I kind exactly. of can't imagine it without it, but... Oh, we got some shots going on in here now. Okay, another explosion far in the northwest. That's the other boss, so... If we add it up, that means one team inside here, another team assaulting us in their back, and then another team far away northwest. Mm. That's by the way, actually, the thing I really love the most about this whole game is just like this mental map that you have to build up, like like to really make sense of all the variables and yeah. kind of like, okay, okay, I guess there's no one coming from the south now, unless it's like a duo and there's a single solo around, but but yeah, you can kind of like have those rules of like, yeah, it's probably trios. There's can only be twelve. Oh, that's close. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone right in front of me. Yeah, that's gone. Or that thing. Oh. It might be two people. That was terrible I bad shot. Stacks. On the yeah. left side of the marker. It's a, um, a tier one red shirt. Oh, he just probably died just, from over that window. Probably, probably just got yep. shot. <laughs> he definitely yeah. just died from that window. <laughs> yeah, one really oh. close, really close. Yeah, left side, left side coming up. It looks like oh. me. Tag once. Behind here, oh, behind nice. here. Devil's down. advocate. I killed one. Oh, that's Devil's like he's still trying to get me. Devil's advocate towards marker, and then on the right, the red shot's coming from another one. Oh, you down. The devil's advocate. All right. Oh, I thought they were down. All right, sorry, that was my bad. I had someone. There was another. I do have. Um, I do have necromancer. Oh. oh. From, from 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 the body pushing up on us. Got nice. Him. Yeah, that one. Good job. Nice. All right. Uh, can, uh, do you think you're safe to be res from? I mean, I can, oh, I got bro. necromancer actually. I, I can necro. As well. Okay. Yeah. No. We're all good. Make some noise on the left. Just hope that sniper doesn't get you. So those last shots were mine. Nice. Oh, oh yeah, you got your Jess. You came back around. All right, I can. That's a. That's I a can close. Body Coming bot. up close, tier three hunter down at the railroad. Very close already. Right, like don't, I don't, say, don't, I'm gonna that rock there. And then there's a sniper probably inside on the right. So it's like a tier three with a coat, female, I think, a long rifle. Yeah. And then the sniper. All right, so 100, the, 150 health. I, I think the last shot that we heard might have been the bounty team from the other boss coming by because they're kind of, kind of in the vicinity, right? 75. Oh, yeah. they're doing the. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Yeah, they're trying to push around to the right, actually. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're moving, they're moving. They want to get to the exit there, I think. Left the bounty and on the run. Okay, well... To my left here, towards the building. Oh, I see it. Oh, that's a whole squad. Oh. That, that's the, the new team, right? Yeah, it's a whole, it's, yeah. it's three. I mean, I can also play it aggressively if you guys want to do it fast, it's fine as well. <laughs> Otherwise, I would just wait for a little bit, uh, wait for them to move maybe on, and then I'm going to get you and we have another gonna step oh, at yeah. them when they pick up their bounty. It's fine by me, quiet moment will give yeah. us a chance to ask some more questions. I mean, well, this is the big thing that we haven't actually spoken about yet, is we're playing the, the, you know, the new map that's come out, which is a huge change. Um, 
so what, what's the what's kind of the response been to the new map you know how many have you had to do many tweaks to it since or is it kind of come out and you've been working on it for a while um so the good thing about this new map was that it kind of like helped us um to, to bring all of the, the lessons learned from the first two maps into this mm -hmm. right away right so we knew it's going to be an easy win when it comes to the setting right like just like just having having oh, okay there the other boss i'm gonna move up so like having um Having uh, like a cowboy town, for example, like a typical like saloon, that type of stuff, that's gonna be easy wins. People will love that. We want that. They want that. Oh, there we go. Still still around. Oh, yeah, there. Um, but in in general, like the compound sizes, like how 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 to move, what weapons can dominate what space, like all of these lessons learned have kind of like moved into this into this design here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's why why overall this map is very well received by the community. Like, I mean, the veterans obviously they're just like having oops, new stuff. They just gonna enjoy having like a new space. Um, like, uh, if, if you say like this game is like in, the, in its fourth year now, and we have three maps. One of them was there originally. That basically means like every one and a half to two years or so, there's like a new map to experience. Yeah, no, no map yeah. to its like early access time, uh, especially in 2018. Like, what were the meta loadouts back then? And has it always sort of been a, a rifles game for those who, who get really it, serious about it? I think it has been kind of always been a rifles game. I think that's that's, that's fair to say. Um, there were a couple of things that were different um, around Tans initially. Like, for example, um, not every hunter did have 150 hit points. Like, uh, tier 1 hunters back then had only 100 hit points. That meant that weapon balance overall was much more like favored towards the high damage weapons that could then bring you down with a chest shot easily, right? And you need to kind of win rounds in order to upgrade the hunters, um, at least uh, unless you take like a more expensive uh, tier, like two or tier three hunter. And that alone, balancing wise, has had a huge impact on how the game has been perceived. Like we also had fewer weapons overall, right? So that means um, we had, I think, the mm, uh, the Mozi Nagant. And its family, and we had the um, we had the um, the Sparks rifle, and the Sparks very early on got like this 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 um, to this day like get get this 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 um, feeling of being uh, like an elite choice kind of like attached to it, right? Like one one shot has to hit, and right. you only have this one shot to kind of make it count. And I think that has that is kind of like influenced people quite a bit in terms of how they perceive the meta around this game as well because obviously the veteran players they have kind of picked up on that right like mozina guns and and, uh, and and sparks has been like weapons where you could show off your skill the uppercut in a very similar spot right like it's, as a yeah, as a hand hand rifle in a way um and um obviously as the game has become then more rich more diverse in terms of equipment like other play styles have also been added right we added more shotguns yes we also added added um, um, more rapid fire options around it like with levering fanning dual wheel latest and obviously there's always a bit of controversy around that right some people they say like this game should only ever be about single shot rifles and that's that's how you how you kind of like kind of like define skill and everything else is kind of weird and, and and should not be allowed and you have those people who just enjoy the variety of like being being able to do it in very different ways um like camp it out sometimes snipe it out sometimes um running with a bomb lance sometimes you know. sometimes bomb lands i mean <laughs> absolutely uh, I mean, it's I, I personally enjoy the variety and the diversity I, I i don't like to commit to one particular loadout if i can i play sniper just because i enjoy it a lot but that's more really subje uh, subjective thing not because it's like the best strategy um but i do think that that one of the strengths of hunt is that everything is kind of valid but everything is mm. also kind of fair there's groups who, who disagree with that, obviously. Um, it's it's fair enough, right? Like, pe people people like to stick to their camp. Like, if 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 you are if you are like the the long ammo um, guy or the shotgun guy or whatever, that's how you think the game should be played because that's how you enjoy it the most. But I think overall, if you just take a stand back a little bit there and, and look at the game, I think all of these options are valid and diverse and rich and bring something that that makes for interesting matches. And I think that's that's ultimately where the whole thing comes down to just being able to express yourself by playing in a fair environment without just like yeah pissing everybody off basically you're talking about you know trying to make every gun viable but it must be quite a big job when you've got you've got a ton of guns already you're going to add a lot of guns with different ammo types but you also have like poison ammo types now and all sorts of different special ammo types plus perks plus the skins you know how, how do you genuinely try and keep everything playable and everything like a valid option in the game 
um, think, thinking it through and playtesting, I guess, in a nutshell. Um, so, so yes, uh, with any any game, I guess at one point, if you keep on adding content to it, at one point you run the risk of either losing what might have originally been there as a balance, or um, at least losing the overview and therefore creating imbalance through through just like bad tuning and, and just bad choices. From our side, what we've tried to do is um, have a governing system for balance which is based on on kind of like a mix of, a mix of the authenticity of a weapon so like you know like the shotguns for example we have the spencer shotgun the specter in our game which has been the first ever pump action in in real life like what's based on and um that weapon had flaws in it mechanically because it wasn't a modern shotgun yet they had like you had to kind of like move the move the slide in order to reload and we kind of try to identify these these kind of like quirks of, of weapons of the era in order to use them for balancing. Like if, if, a, if a single action revolver has to be reloaded one round at a time, because there's just that little little loading gate uh, that just allows one round to be put in, then we can use that for balancing. And um, trying trying to make the weapons feel as if they were functional in a way, that makes sense. Like, like our philosophy is not to say we take 100 points and we distribute them between uh, the firepower, the, the capacity, the accuracy, uh, whatever, right? And then, then maybe like different versions of an M4 rifle might actually have very different stats, even though, well, technically it's still the same gun underneath, right? Just for game balancing reasons. That's not our philosophy. In our case, like the Aftermath, for example, is still a Mosine Gant. That means it fires the rounds of a Mosine Gant. That means they are powerful, they, they're, they're lethal. Uh, so how can we make this balanced if you can uh, rapid fire 15 of those rounds downrange, right? So from our side, then it's about balancing through through cumberness, uh, balancing through through uh, control, like like how hard is it actually to keep this thing on a target, and that's like more the philosophy when it comes to to how we approach the balance, and I think that's been a guiding factor to also keep kind of things in check and offer more variety rather than trying to reinvent the wheel with every gun. Mm. Prison is probably the place where I've had the most intense firefights. I don't know if it's just its size so that there's just so many different angles on it and different buildings and windows. Um, but that's the, what, what would you say like is your favorite compound to push or the one that people I don't know tend to I don't know there's not really any metric is there they're either going to die or they're not so but yeah what would you say uh, is your so, favorite? so what I what I personally enjoy I guess the most still um is is uh for karmic that for me is just like it's it's yeah. it's 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 a very simple compound when you think of the structure like the amount of how you get in and out with the, the being able to walk around the, the wall on the inside on one side and then the big tower to keep um i think that just for me it resonates with me in terms of like the options i have around that and especially the latest changes we did when we did like the little pass for the older maps like that this this middle middle pathway is now open to kind of move between the two two sides of the building I, I just enjoy moving around there. I think it, it has such nice, interesting flanking options, and then the roof is such a death trap, but also such awesome if you actually manage to like get a, get like another team um, that's approaching for, like, as they move through the swarms. Uh, I, I think it's just very powerful. You playing hunter mode or gunslinger? Uh, I'm playing in hunter mode, but I'm also just used to it since it was what we originally had. Yeah, for me personally, um, Hunter mode just gives me more flexibility. But I cannot totally understand. Like, if someone's coming from from other games, like uh, Gunslinger, it's much more natural to get used to. It took me a solid week. I switched from Gunslinger to Hunter, and it took me a solid week to get used to. But uh, I do really like just putting the gun down. It makes me a bit less nervous when I'm trying to peek windows. Hello. One down. Oh. One tech. Yep. Oh. Yeah. I had the worst entrance. Damn it. Hey, two different concertines of that thing. Oh, there's a bomb. Damn. He's, yeah. He's on the left side before, but... Not how I planned it. Maybe I'll just swap the footage when uh, we get this through, and I'll put my name on uh, Dennis's one. <laughs> <laughs>
I just had the worst entrance into that building. I just didn't see a tripwire <laughs> at all, and it just blew me to smithereens. It was, it was a bomb plants, right? There are. Yeah, yeah. I even heard them put it down. I got severely outplayed by someone who backed off immediately threw a concertina bomb in my face. But risky. I I could I could I know, try to get you. I think he's on that left corner to like closer to you around that corner now. They're bound to just be watching it. No underburn. Okay, that's oh, that, that was the death of me. That was that was the aim punch. <laughs> oh, that was a good uh, <laughs> aim punch directly into it. Nice. So this is quite interesting. You know, this is kind of like the foggy, you know, weather, and you have the nighttime, the daytime, are different, you know, levels. Have you ever, you know, thought about putting potentially different weather kind of mode? You know, different weather, just weather's in the game for di for each map or anything like that. Um, we we have um, so also one of the things that the community is talking about over and over again. Um, it's like an important topic to them is, for example, weather effects like rain and stuff like that, or, or snow even. Um, I mean, obviously, like hard to implement, but there's also one consideration where we haven't done this yet, and, and why why this is not like an easy thing to do, and that is, um, hunt is relying so much on audio, right? Like, so mm -hmm. I would say like we normally say audio is half the experience. I would say in hunt it's more than half of the experience. It's, it's just such an essential element for you to, to kind of like understand what is going on, move around and, and get your bearings. If you were to have like rain all the time, but it's pouring down, it would, it would eat up the sound so much what's happening around mm -hmm. you. I, mean, I can show you in a second when we, go, when we go to the next clue, like when we go past the fire here. Just having yeah. that fire constantly um, just makes for this such, such an unpleasant area to fight there. Like whenever, whenever you get drawn into a fight at, at Fort Bolden, you try to go away from 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 the big from the big pyre. And I suppose the difference is, you know, if if you knew about the weather condition, and you like chose a map with that certain weather on it. You could prepare for like bring like shotguns in and try and go like you know real fast on it or something like that. But because it's kind of randomized, you're always going to go and like if you have a sniper and it's nighttime. You know, that's the one thing we're always saying. Like you pick a sniper and they're like, oh, trust me, it's my bad luck. Like it's a nighttime map from there. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, so I think this. This is, this is partially down to the matchmaking. Um, so, uh, for example, like there's, there's so many players queuing up to find, uh, find like a new game at the same time, right? And the more you give them options to choose what they want to play, like a nighttime map, a daytime map, the more you kind of split that potential queue for players searching for a game. And uh, depending on how granular you go, you might run the risk of, of at one point not having enough players to fill up the queues, right? And then, then once in a while you might have games that are underpopulated, or you you might need to increase the waiting time to find a match. So so for us, it's all part of this of this balance aspect. That's why we also don't have, at the moment, the choice in there. We would like to add more of that. They have some ideas about it, but I cannot tell you exactly what they are right now. But it's definitely a topic for us. Like, how can we make sure people can get the gear for the type of, of environment that they, they prepared for without upsetting the, the queuing problems that I mentioned? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think totally reasonable. <laughs> I, you know, like most games, I, don't, uh, I would be surprised if Hunt ever got uh, you know, daytime map lobby and nighttime map lobby. So a lot of games just like to unify the lobbies as much as possible. But at the same time, it would be nice to take a flashlight and, and know it'll be useful. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the flashlight is actually one of those relics, like from the early days of development. And um, we even we even had the problem a little bit that we wanted to make the game a lot darker initially, like when it comes to nighttime. Um, then, then when we released, it's just that also playtesting has showed us like people would just not want to stay there. Like it's um, there's always people obviously who like nighttime. There's always people who like fog, and, and they just crave that experience. And that's perfectly fun and valid. But the majority of the players do not. They they mm -hmm. actually they actually will go to an exit when they when the fog map comes up. And 
you, you usually always have a little bit less action on these type of maps because one of the teams or one of the guys at least might have just like went for the exit because he's just looking for something else. Maybe he brought a scope and wants to snipe or he just yeah. is not in the mood for it. Mm -hmm. And um, that makes it so hard when it comes to the queuing because when we had it as a separate contract, like they were underpopulated. Like you usually had like kind of empty servers at times. Like, I mean, keep in mind we have like large regions like like Europe and, and US but it's also smaller region like Oceania for example which just doesn't have in generally so many players so so any sorts of problems about distributing the players you have across different maps etc you always have to take a look at the smallest regions you have because it has to be fun for them as well I definitely uh, dread getting night time just because it's so much scarier it's just worse. It's yeah, just worse. that's one thing with this game. I was playing the other day with some friends, and we like all in the time we were playing a couple of hours of playing, like had like a moment where we genuinely like jump scared for a second. Even though you're so used to just killing zombies over and over, you know, in this game, sometimes one just creeps up on you in a way, and it just screams in your ear in such a way <laughs> yes. that it still makes you jump. I, I died to dogs yesterday while playing like in front of like a thousand player audience while playing with the biggest streamer. Um, just because I, 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 I was getting too cocky. I, I didn't want to pull the trigger. I mm. <laughs> I wanted to finish them with melee because it would have allowed me to flank around. And, and eventually I just got overwhelmed. So there's that on one end, but on the other hand, yes, yeah, sometimes like there's just this one enemy just running out of the bushes you totally didn't have on a radar and it completely freaks you out that moment. Especially if you're yeah. already tense from because you're running from another player with a shotgun or bomb lands or whatever, uh, and you run into like that other thing, and you fought them hundred times, you killed them hundred times, but that particular one still mm -hmm. is gonna gonna freak you out. You know, also one of my favorite things about the game are the weapon variants. Uh, I, turns out there was a lot of weird modifications people made to guns in the 1800s. Um, I'm curious if you can hint at any other. Guns on your wish list or variants on your wish list that are like under the guns. Um, I can't reveal anything in terms of what is exactly coming, but I can give you a little bit my personal opinion on, on some yeah. stuff that I personally really like to see. So, so for me, for example, what I think is that there's so many interesting rifles still to be explored. Uh, there's definitely more potential for for like action shotguns even, and. What I really like that we have a chance to, to, to add to the game uh, at one point is a bit more weird stuff as well, like um, speaking like like um, aftermath, uh, bomb plans uh, type of, of, of weirdness. So like things which are, are they already exit? Uh, yeah, things, th things that are kind of like a little bit out there and they might offer like new options like that. I think like the bow was the latest new weapon class that we introduced, right? Like something, something fresh and I think that's cool and fine, but there's just so much to explore when it comes to this era, this time. So many drawbacks these weapons had, uh, like being kind of crazy in their looks and sometimes not feeling very safe when you kind of like put them in your hands. Yeah, one thing, I, I saw this Forgotten Weapons video recently and then immediately saw other people suggesting it, like tagging Hunt in the video and stuff. Like, it was, uh, it was this old add-on speed loader. To, uh, <laughs> For the single weapon. action. Exactly. Single yeah, there's a... Like everyone yeah, was yeah. like, oh, you make, make it a Romero... Uh, <laughs> Uh, alternate. Some people suggest. Yeah. You know, absolutely, cool. absolutely. I, I totally agree. Like personally, I think this this could be such an interesting thing to add to the game. I don't think like balancing wise, this, this would be absolutely fine to add. You can always just cut the barrel of the Romero a little bit short in case that would be an issue, right? Like so, it's it's not. Right. So wait, so you're saying it's a Romero with a fast loading kind of mechanism yeah, it's, it's, on it? Yeah, it's it's I, I saw it as well. It's it's really interesting because you know like it's a, it's a break action the shotgun. So you kind of have to break it open in order to, to eject around and a new one. And they kind of put like this little like spring-loaded mechanism attached to the side of it. It's ridiculous. It's like they put the outside <laughs> of a, or the inside of a gun on the outside. Right? Yeah, exactly. So like as as you operate um, like the, the the break action in order to eject around, it kind of pushes the new round in front. So as you close the break action, you get a new round, and so it just makes everything go fast. It's super interesting, very okay. weird, very fun to you to, to look at. So yeah, I mean. My, my personal opinion is this has hand written all over it just from the from theme absolutely, absolutely. If, it, if it wasn't if i didn't see a real video on it, i would have thought you guys made it up <laughs> yeah we, we always have to we always have to walk like the it, it's like a bit borderline we always have to walk the edge a little bit with these other things because 
I mean, who in their good mind would put like a blade on the stock of their rifle, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, an axe. That, that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's where, where, where realism has to, has to take a step back just for, for, for gunplay coolness and just like interesting ideas. Like, like no one would, no one would put like a blade close to where they operate a weapon. That's just, just put a bayonet in front. Yeah, sure, but not at the back of the gun. <laughs> But, but it's um, also, I mean, you know, it also has a, a clear practicality in a world of, of zombies. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, so, so our approach has been, okay, how can, how can we make this so weird that it feels as if it's kind of like, it's 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 realistic in a way. It is believable, credible. Like people yeah. could, if you were to be faced to fight monsters in that era, and this is the tools of the era you had available. Like, it 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 it, it makes sense to trade off like some of the safety measures for this additional firepower, for example. Yeah, the zombie kind of the, that theme, you know, this kind of like plague thing, definitely gives you a little bit of leeway to mess with the you know, the standards of the time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think think of the the bomb lance. I mean, the, the idea behind the bomb lance is okay. This is a wailing lance, and and the wailing lances at that time, they very often employed explosives. So what happened is you had like this 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 spear, you kind of this javelin, you kind of launched, that it kind of like as it as it hit the whale, it's it's it, it split in two parts, and that kind of triggered a fuse, and the part that continued to penetrate into the into 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 the poor animal, um, would then basically blow up, causing severe wounding and therefore making the kill. Right, like we, we took that concept and we thought, okay, how can we apply that like to to like oh, a meathead, for example, which is like mm -hmm. a big tough brute. How would you bring it down? Normal bullets kind of like they go under in the, in, in in his in his belly, right? Like they just right. don't hit any vital organs. They it's, he's just just too too fat for it, honestly. Um, right. So so how, how what 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 tools can you use? And the bomb lance or using this whaling lance of its time was was the natural answer to how how can we get around this? I mentioned it earlier, but you know, like draining this area, that was quite a big. A massive shaker, really. Um, you say that was the main, that was the one place where you really felt like it had to have like a really major change. Um, yes, specifically Scupper, just because it, it it became a bit of a meme, also, right? Mm. Um, so so it, it it has to be playable first, and then secondly, it can look pretty. And while I really love the uh, like the the half sunken visual style of it, it just it just was always a bit a bit weird to fight around. Right, like you, you throw dynamite, and more often than not, it would just fall to water, uh, or you couldn't move fast enough, and just that had to, it had to change for 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 playability. I also liked that a lot, but I also never saw it because we would just avoid this place like the play. Yeah, I should be dead soon. I'm using my poison arrows all the time. It should be fast. I'm still white. Oh, I just got there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's, like the, it it's, it's, it's like the best sound of the game, like that shovel hit. Uh, I love it so much. It's clonk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it always gives me like Team Fortress 2 clonk wipes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, player outside? South? Yeah, they're here. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere that way. I thought I heard someone and then I was like, nah, I think I'm just making it up. Get up because I have a sniper rifle. I could then bail out a little bit if the PT allows. Uh, bomb, bomb, bomb. Ooh. Multiple. No, I didn't think I was close to that. As it was. Uh, roof coming in. Ladder. Oh! I think I don't know if we traded uh, or not. Small window. Small window. He's wounded. The gap. Yeah, one southeast, one northeast. Trying to get a trap here. Yeah. Nice traps. So the one guy bailed a little bit north, so one just got in the traps, and the other one was still southeast. So do we have one corpse in here? Yeah, we one, got one, one here. Top? Then maybe maybe let's let's set him on fire for pressure. Yeah. I got a lantern. Oh. I Northeast. Oh, he just wall banged me. I think. Yep, he did. I'll hide behind this generator for a second. Going to right outside uh, southwest here. So, yeah. Bump. Oh, 
how did that get me? <sighs> Such bad luck. Coming Right. Ready? Yep. Ah, I saw her. Ooh. I saw her that very same second there. Good shot. Well played. Nice shot. Uh, Wit sister is outside east adjacent building. Oh, oh. <laughs> that right that now. That we got me good there. <laughs> All right, fair play. Um, All right. So Absolutely. Yeah, it's thank you so fun. much, Dennis. It's been great. Uh, happy for you for anniversary for Hunt. Um, thank you. And uh, yeah, well. Uh, yeah. Let we'll me know if you guys again. want to play again. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Uh, I think we'll, we'll train up. We'll have like a montage next time, and then uh, <laughs> we'll jump back on and see if we fare any better. Uh, it's, it's a good thing if you just need to play long enough. There will be excellent footage eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah.